On this episode of Chef's Brain, we are celebrating Pancake Day and I'm up against one of my toughest competitors, Nicola Stransky. She beat me last time, will she beat me again? Who will be a pancake prince or princess? And who will be a pancake pauper? Let's find out. Welcome to Chef Brain, the show where we take you inside the mouth-watering mental myriad that is the mind of the chef. The rules are very simple. We've got a bunch of mystery ingredients. We have 30 minutes to make something magical. And this week, I'm up against one of my fiercest competitors. Hello. How are you doing, Stranners? Good. Three, two, one. Oh, oh hello. <laughs> <laughs> There's something up here. What's going on? So, pancake day. Ah. pancake. Savory. Sorry, Patrick. I guess I'll have sweet. Mm -hmm. Library time? Let's go. Let's do this. I found a nice little book with a Peking duck recipe in it. Oh, nice yes. choice. You're gonna need... Duck. Okay. Some spring onions. Mm -hmm. Some hoisin sauce. Mm -hmm. What a, a crowd pleaser. Cucumber. I'm gonna make fluffy, Banoffee chef brain pancakes. Oh. Oh yeah. I'm gonna need some chocolate. Yes, there you go. <laughs> Which I just happen to have hidden in my armpit. Some condensed milk. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna make into dolce de leche. Delicious. Whipping cream. And finally, buttermilk. Wow. So Stran is pancake day. Tell big me. big in Australia? No. No? No, very little about pancake day. No? It's a religious festival originally on Shrove Tuesday using up all of the kind of naughty or indulgent ingredients they had in their house in the pancakes so that then for the next 40 days and 40 nights they could have a fast. I mean you can give up whatever you want for Lent yep. but the original idea was whatever goes in the pancakes is the stuff you're giving up for Lent. I'm gonna make my pancakes with buttermilk. Ooh, why? Yeah, because it makes them super fluffy. I'm gonna make American style pancakes. So I'm gonna put all my wet ingredients into one bowl. Two cups of buttermilk. Two cups of flour, two cups of milk, and then one egg. Patrick, did you know the highest flip of a pancake? Six meters. 9.47. Largest pancake in meters across. Let's say like the size of a, of a, of a king size bed, a few meters. 15. 15 meters. Now I've separated my dry ingredients into this bowl. I'm gonna put a tablespoon of baking powder in there with my sugar and my all purpose flour and a mashed banana. I am just cutting my cucumber and my spring onion into sort of half centimeter strips. You can also add some vanilla extract to this mixture if you've got some. The most prolific vanilla producing country in the world is? Madagascar. Yes it is, <laughs> you are good. Now I've just got a piece of cooked duck and I'm just going to pull the meat sort of Gently pull that off. Right, I'm going to mix my melted butter into the rest of my liquid. So the batter, once you've mixed it and it's nice and smooth, you need to leave it for five minutes to rest because it lets the gluten develop in the flour, which gives you a more springy pancake. <laughs> Just about there. Whipping cream gets to this point where you just take it like three stirs too much and it goes from just perfect, nice, silky texture to like a piece of concrete. Next thing I need to do is dolce de leche, caramel sauce. Now there are two ways of doing this. You can either buy it ready made or you can get some condensed milk and you can put it in some boiling water and just leave it there for, should be an hour. Oh dear. <laughs> The signs are not good. I have a ready-made one. Thank goodness. Here's okay. one I prepared earlier. And this one's got a ring pull on it. You know what? Don't try and make your own condensed milk dolce de leche. Just buy it with a ring pull, already made. That's what I'm talking about. Cooking these um, pancakes, we're just sort of watching and waiting for the inside to change into a deeper yellow. 
and that's how you can tell when they're cooked when there's no raw pancake on the top. Lift up the pan and move it around in a circular motion if you want your pancake to be thinner. Okay, so with this, you need to cook it until the edges look like they're getting slightly crispy and then there's some bubbles appearing on top, which is basically what it's doing now. This one, I think, oh man. Cucumber and spring onion. Oh yes, that is what I'm talking about, look. Okay, that's beautiful. Third pancake, that's, what, that's how it works. First two, may as well forget about them. Dolce de leche, cream in the middle, a little bit of chocolate. Let's bring on the judges. Mmm, that is delicious. That's so good. You wouldn't really want to eat this on a date though, would you? It would be a little bit, a little bit of a risky situation. I'd give it like a solid eight. Eight and a half. Really tasty. Everyone's eating it before, right? Uh, poison's coming through really strongly. The flavour of that is delicious. A seven for me. Six and a half. Pancakes are a winner. Well, Patrick, congratulations. Thank you, although to be fair, I reckon if we had a dinner, I would love to have those as the main course and that as the dessert. They completely complement each other. So yours is epic. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Chef Brain. If you want to see the recipes for the pancakes, look in the description below. I would suggest having this one for your main course and this one for your pudding. And we will see you next time. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Chef Brain. If you want to see more episodes, then click subscribe. Also, you can leave a comment below or give us a thumbs up. Catch you next time.